Greetings and welcome to our SWI 10 Tips for Office 365 webcast. This should be right around 15 minutes, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to look at is your Outlook inbox, as most people have a lot of email pain because email seems to be the one thing that we all have trouble getting through. This is a demo account for Karen Berg, and she has about 27 unread emails. And the first thing we're going to do is see what we can do to maybe help get some of her items out of her inbox. This is a new feature from Office 365 called Clutter, and it's a folder that um, comes in your Outlook folders. And what you can do is drag emails that maybe aren't terribly important to you, like happy hour, we can drag that over here to clutter. Or if there's something about a, let's say the hiking trip, eventually clutter will learn which items are not essential to you and automatically reroute those to clutter. You can move them out and back into your email inbox if they've been put there mistakenly. And this folder will continue to adjust to your needs. The other tip we're going to look at is um, something called Show as Conversation. And if you come here to your Outlook and you click on the View tab, you can see this little box that says Show as Conversations. Now, as you can see, we have a bunch of emails relative to a hiking trip. And if you decide that those aren't very important, and if you haven't managed to drag them all over to Clutter, you can use this Show as Conversation checkbox. And if you check that and apply that to this folder, you can now see that everything in this conversation sort of falls under this one header. And it does free up the real estate in your email inbox so you're not overwhelmed and you can pass by the conversations that possibly aren't terribly important. Another great time-saving tip is if you get an email and you realize that it's an action item and you'd like to have a meeting about it, you can click on the email here, drag it to your calendar, and it populates with the body, uh, the text of the email, and you can actually invite an attendee. Let's go ahead and invite Sanjay to this meeting. And we're going to make it tomorrow on a Friday at 6 p.m. And we're going to send that off. And that is now an appointment on the calendar. I don't need this email anymore because I'm going to follow up with it on my calendar at the date and time. So those are a few great tricks for helping deal with email clutter and email overload. Now let's head over to Office 365 and talk about what's new here. This is uh, what you might see if you're a new Office 365 user and you've just logged in. Um, if you've added a photo, it'll appear here in the upper right-hand corner. But I want to draw your attention to the upper left-hand corner to look at what we call the application launcher. Now, I have placed these four applications here because these are the Microsoft Office applications I use most often. Although I do have many more applications available to me, and if I click on My Apps, I can see all of the applications that are available to me. And if I decide that I want to add Power BI, uh, to my application launcher, I can actually do that here. Although let's try it with Yammer since Power BI doesn't seem to want to get added there. So let's look over here at My Apps and pin to App Launcher. There we go, Power BI. And I'm also going to want Delve and OneNote. Now when I head over to my app launcher, these are all here. And if I decide I don't want Outlook in the app launcher, I can unpin, unpin it from the app launcher. So this is a great way to organize the apps that you use most often. Now I want to talk a little bit about Yammer. As you can see, that's an app that comes with the business versions of Office 365. And I already have a tab open here. So we're going to bebop over to Yammer and see what's happening. Now, this is sort of an enterprise social networking platform that is only available to people within your organization. If someone within your organization um, wants to connect and communicate on Yammer, they must have an organization email address. But what makes this valuable is you can have conversations and make decisions and share information without cluttering up the email inbox. Email Outlook is a great tool 
but it's not really the best tool for a task list or for making decisions or for sharing information. Yammer is a great place to do that. As you can see, um, Contoso has a new product called the M400. And Ali has actually tagged that in her post here. And if I click on the tag, M400, it's actually going to show me all of the conversations relevant to that product. You can also make groups in Yammer. Um, they've made a group for human resources, so employees can come here and find information relative to um, healthcare and benefits and careers and jobs. There's a Yammer 101 group that can help people learn more about Yammer. It really is a great place to sort of share internal information that's not so important. It requires being sent an email. You can also make external Yammer groups, and at SWI we've done exactly that to help people find the information they need to be more productive and solve uh, technical issues, and we call that the Swift Academy. And uh, Karen actually belongs to the Swift Academy, and so she can come here and ask a question. Uh, maybe she wants to know what's the best way to learn productivity tips for Excel. Or let's make it a uh, word. And so once she posts this, someone from SWI will come along and direct her to whatever sort of training or brushing up materials relative to her request. And here you can see here's an Excel um, free app for Excel training that was posted here. And as you can see, someone else asked a question about public facing websites with Office 365. And at SWI, we just came in and posted a link to her at blogs.office.com that answered her question. So a lot of the information that people need is already out there on the internet, and this is just a place that SWI has made for our clients and customers to come and hopefully have a little shortcut to find information they need. So that's a little bit about Yammer. Now I'd like to look at um, OneDrive. Now OneDrive is the place where documents are stored, whereas we might have previously stored documents in our My Documents folder. Now when we store them in OneDrive, they're accessible from any a computer that has an internet connection. I can be traveling and at a hotel business center and log on to portal.microsoftonline.com or portal.office.com and be able to retrieve and actually work on my documents, even if Microsoft Office is not installed on the computer I'm working on. So there are uh, a couple of components of Office 365, one being SharePoint and one being OneDrive for Business. And there's often a lot of confusion about what goes there. Today we're only going to talk about OneDrive and about how to share documents with others um, without having to attach them to an email. A lot of the tips that we're talking about and the productivity has to do with alternative ways of communicating rather than using Outlook and email, because as I said before, we tend to get bogged down by that. So we've just popped into Karen's OneDrive, and if she has a document here that she wants to share with someone, instead of attaching it to an email, she can actually open this menu and then just click on Share. And if Karen wants to share this document with Molly, all she has to do is sort of open up this little portal that will allow her to send Molly a link directly from her OneDrive for Business, and then Molly will have a link to the document rather than having it attached to the email. The benefit of this is they can both be working on the same document, yes, even at the same time, but it also doesn't create versioning issues. It eliminates the versioning problem because everyone's dealing with the original document. We're going to send this to Molly Clark. Here's the document. I'm going to require her to sign in, and then I'm going to click Share. Molly will then get an email that says, hey, here's the document that Karen has shared with you, and it eliminates the need to attach this to an email. So that is uh, sharing from, from OneDrive. Now I want to talk a little bit about concurrent document authoring. And that's a fancy name for two people working in a document at the same time. So I'm back in Karen's OneDrive, and if I open this document, and I'm opening it in Word online, and 
there's some text in here which we're going to um, we're going to edit the document in Word Online, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, delete this text that's here. This is just a test document. Now here's the interesting thing about Word Online: when you say file. There's a save as, but there's not a save. That's because it saves automatically, much like some of the other cloud-based um, word processing options you might see. When you're working in Word Online, it automatically saves. So this is Karen typing a document. And let's say that, boy, this is getting really tough, and I would love for Molly to help me with this. And I want to ask her to come right in here. So Molly, Molly Clark, this is going to generate an email to her. Yes, another email. Please help me edit this document ASAP. So she's going to call, require Molly to sign in, and she's going to share this document off to Molly. And once Molly receives that email, she only needs to click on the link in the email and it will bring her right into this document and they can make edits at the same time. So as you can see, this document has been now been shared with Molly Clark. And uh, Molly actually just received an email. Let's look at that. I have Molly open in another window. So. Now this is Molly getting the document. Molly's going to open the document. And let's come back to Karen's view here and see what we can accomplish. So we should see a little pop-up in the upper right-hand corner that tells us that Molly is working in the document as well. And you can see Molly's typed something, and we know that because of this little green flag, and it tells us up in this corner that Molly is also editing. And Molly sees the same thing with Karen's information, and Molly can continue to type. This is a great way to collaborate. And you can see the little green marker. That's Molly moving around in the document. Great way to um, work anywhere and collaborate with your coworkers without having to be in the same room. And we call that concurrent document authoring. So another great feature that comes with Office 2013 and Word to be specific is um, working with PDFs. Now here's a PDF of some specifications, and I'm going to open this up with uh, Adobe Acrobat. And once this opens up, you'll see it's a spec sheet for a Contoso um, L270 product. Now here's a copy of the exact same document, but if I don't happen to have an application that can edit this, I can actually open this in Microsoft Word and edit it. So I'm going to right click and say open with Word. And it does take Word a little bit of time to sort of make this into something editable. And it's not always perfect, but I have routinely gotten some great results with opening PDFs in Word and then being able to make changes or edits to it. So here's our Contoso washer dryer. Let's make this a little bigger so that we can see. Uh, it looks like we had a little, a little burp with the uh, bullet point there. No worries. We'll just add that. And then it looks like our image got pushed down to the bottom page. Maybe we can just backspace that back up to one page. There you go. Not too shabby. And now if I want to change this to the M400, say we change the name of this, and then I'll go ahead and save this back down to my desktop because that's where I had it stored for easy access. We're going to call this washer dryer M400. So now we have this in a, in a Word format, and then I can even go ahead and save this back to a PDF by choosing Save as PDF. 
and that should pop back open as a PDF. So we have gone from the L270 product specs to the M400 product specifications. Um, and we did it all in Microsoft Word. It's a great feature. One more for, for cool feature with Excel 2013 is something called Flash Fill. And this is a huge time saver if you work with a lot of data. And here is a uh, reseller sheet that somebody unfortunately put the reseller and the store in the same column. So the old school way of doing this would be to insert a couple of columns and then you come over here and say, this is going to be reseller, this is going to be store, and then you'd start with, or you might do some version of cut and paste here. Um, and if we're going to make this tailspin, oh, so I typed in tailspin and look, Excel figured out what I was going to do. And it grayed in all of those options. All I have to do is hit the enter key and it populates the rest of that column. And guess what? We're going to do it for the other side too. Um, this one is, there you go. So all of a sudden a process that would have either required the re-entry of information or a lot of cutting and pasting is now done almost automatically. Great feature and that's called Flash Fill in Excel. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about compliance. Um, if you haven't been to the Office 365 Trust Center, it's a great place to go and just look for information. And I always like to point this out, which is the top 10 compliance standards of Office 365. It's everything from HIPAA to FERPA to Gram-Leach Act. And there's a lot of fantastic information here, not only for you, but for you to share with your customers about how you keep your data and their data safe. And that website is trustoffice365.com. There's some videos there and some great information. And last but not least at SWI, this is what we do. We are the cutting edge in software licensing. We do volume licensing and the software asset management, and we have cloud services, including our Swift IT for Office 365. And what that entails is um, it allows us to manage your Office 365 operating environment and help out your either administrative users or in some cases even end users with making sure that they're productive, uh, collaborative, and innovative using Office, using Office 365. Um, and you can come to our website and fill out this form if you'd like more help. And if you are our current Office 365 customer and you have more than 10 users, you might already qualify for uh, basic support for free. So fill out the form and let us know if you're interested, and we'd love to help you out. Thanks for attending our webinar, and we'll see you the next time.